Lord, we come like your real children. We come like the servants of the Lord. We come, Lord, because you've raised us up in this nation to do something in this nation and beyond this nation. Lord, we pray everything we need to know, everything we need to learn so that we'll make a great impact in this generation. Lord, give it to us today in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to be attentive. Help us, Lord, to have deep interest, passion, and desire to hear your word, to do your word, to obey your word, to keep your word, and then to pass it on to other people. That as we raised up other people in their own time, this is our own time. Touch every life. Transform every life. Do something, Lord, beyond a wildest ex expectation in Jesus' name. I be glorified, Lord, in every life, every church, every ministry, and this whole nation. We thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Thank you very much. You can sit down. This time we're talking about freedom. And not just freedom, ultimate freedom. And a kind of freedom that sets you free. So that you can be an instrument in the hand of the Lord to set other people free. You've discovered, I think you have, that the same water we give to our children, that same water, the parents need to drink. And the same water we give to the nation, and we give to the people at the stadium, that same water, we need to give that same water to the people, the pastors and the ministers who are serving that living water, and who are giving the bread of life unto all the people. That's why I'm going to come back to this theme of freedom. Everybody say freedom. If the head is not free, the members of the body are not going to be free. If the father in the home is not free, then the children are not going to be free. If the pastors, the ministers, if they're not free, if they're all bound up and tied up and oppressed and kind of devastated, there's no way for the church or the ministry to be free. And therefore, the very first thing you are thinking about as a minister, the first thing you are thinking about as a pastor, as a leader in the church is, to what level am I free? To what percentage am I free? How much of the freedom coming from Calvary, coming from Christ, has been passed on unto me? I'm talking to you on ministerial success through pastoral freedom ministerial success through pastoral freedom it's when the pastors are free when the ministers are free when the workers are free when the preachers are free that they were going to pass on that freedom unto all the people now can you be a minister and not be free can you be a pastor and not be free? And can you be somebody at the very head of the queue and you're leading other people and yet you are not free? Can I just run you through the Bible and tell you some people that had important position in the economy of God, had important position in all the ministry that the Lord had set up and yet they were not free? Let's start. Achan was in the army. The, the greatest army of the people of God wanting to take over the land of Canaan. Achan was not free. Balaam was a great prophet. In fact, Balak had so much confidence in him that he said, I want to defeat the nation of Israel. The only person I need to do that is not money. And it's not people. I don't even need any other nation to join me in battle to conquer the land of Israel. The only person I need is Balaam. Balaam was not free. Cain was the first son of the people that came out directly under the mighty hand of God in creation. The son, the first son to be born. 
and the only one you know adam came adam was not born eve was not born like we are born the very first person to be born into this world like we are born is cain that man was not free come on to the new testament his name is demas he was a companion of paul the apostle and he followed after paul and followed after paul and demas was not free i'm just telling you that this freedom we're talking about except you understand what it all means and then you say i need this freedom you're in the army like Achan, and you are a great prophet like balaam or you are the firstborn maybe of the human race like Cain, or you are one of the disciples and one of the followers and companions of Paul, a great apostle. We need the freedom. There's a man that listened to the greatest apostle of the New Testament. His name is Felix. And when he listened, he trembled. He said, how can this be? But I want to tell you that that man, Felix, was not free. Do you remember that Jacob and Esau were twin brothers of that man, Isaac? We say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And those uh, two people, Jacob was free, but Esau was not free. You remember a man, a great military man in the land of Israel. In fact, when God wanted to take on the Amalekites and the Midianites, he said, now I'm looking for a man in the land of Israel. And if I have that man, I'm going to have victory for the nation of Israel. And then the Lord called that man. And when he called that man, he gave, he, then he blew the trumpet. Everybody come. We're going to overcome our enemies. And then about 32,000 people came. And God said, don't go with all those people. Because they were sick. is the number that gave us the victory. And so he said, if you are afraid, you can go back. And then about 22,000 people went back. And this man, fearless and bold. And then the Lord said, take them to the riverside. And then let's see the people that will take part in that battle. And you know, they all went down there. The only thing, they wanted water for me. I need to drink water. I don't know when I will see water again. And then they did all the only 300 people lapped the water like dogs. And then God said, out of those 300, I'm going to give the nation of the Midianites unto you. What's his name? What's his name? Gideon. And Gideon was not free. A great military man. A great man that brought success to the nation of Israel. And the man came back with the idols of the foreign land. The man was not free. I'm just telling you that just because we're here, we say I'm a minister, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a pioneer, I'm a founder of a church, I'm a general, whatever. It doesn't mean we're free. And until we're free, whatever success we had in the past, like all this people I'm talking to you about, whatever success we have will be short-lived. That is, will be for a short time. Uh, there is a man I read about, uh, you know, it, it says, I'm coming to the New Testament now, when he listened to John the Baptist, he trembled, and he did a lot of things. But then, John the Baptist now gave him one message. And he said, I'm telling you something. It is not right for you to take your brother's wife. And this man with his new wife coming from Philly became so angry. In fact, they chopped up the head of John the Baptist. And Herod and Herodiah were not free. That just because you're in a great position, position of authority, and just because you listen to the great prophet in the land and the great preacher in the land, and you tremble and say, what a message. That doesn't mean that you are free. I'm just saying that as we look at all these people in the Bible, I come from Achan, I come to Balaam, I come to Cain, I come to Demas, I come to Felix, I come to Esau, and then I come to Gideon, I come to Herod and Rodias, and I'm telling you that they were not free. That's the reason why I need to begin to check up my life and check up everything about me. I'm trying to preach to Sierra Leone. I'm preaching Nigeria. I'm preaching America. I'm preaching. I'm preaching England. I'm preaching Ukraine. Preach everywhere. The one question I want to ask myself, am I free? Just globe trotting. And just running around. And just you are here, you are here, you are there. You have a healing ministry, a deliverance ministry. You have such a powerful evangelistic ministry. Let's leave that alone now. Let, let's come to sing together and talk together. And I'm asking the ultimate freedom. 
this final freedom the freedom that makes me a deliverer a liberator am i free are you free that's what we are talking about and if you remember uh, the, the name is ishmael ishmael of course you know the story of ishmael and you know all the descendants of ishmael and you know what is happening today from all the lineage of ishmael was he free and if the hedge is not free the descendants are going to have the same bondage the same hatred the same character characteristic of their forefather of ishmael we know the rest of the story what i am saying is if there's anything important today it is for the hedge to be free it is for the patriarch to be free it is for the pioneer to be free it is for the pastor to be free because it is when that happens they will be able to say praise the lord the rest of the people following after us they will be free in jesus name give me a good good amen you know sometimes when i read the bible especially matthew mark luke and john I, I, sometimes i say to myself would it have been wonderful and marvelous if i had searched directly like this in the presence of jesus christ when he rose out all that revelation from heaven and he talks about this and talks about this if i could just have been there not just to read and not just to hear but to see the face of jesus christ himself and then to sink in the word then i said i would have been a greater preacher and then i checked myself i said just because you're sitting down in the presence of jesus christ the son of god himself doesn't mean you're free there was a man that sat down there three and a half years and was carrying the bag and was the treasurer of the team that followed jesus christ he listened to every message he saw every miracle he saw everything from a to z and the man was not free give me his name Judas is carried. That's the reason why I'm saying it's not enough that you are just here today. It's not enough you are just sitting down. You are listening. It's not enough that you are the crusade. You must do something about what you hear. There must be a desire, a passion, and there must be a decision within you to say, if all these people had great opportunities and yet they were not free, I want to come in here and get in the word of God. And I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. I want to have the freedom that for the rest of my life that remains, I wake up in the morning, I say, praise the Lord, I am free. And then I go out there for the freedom that Christ has made me free and declare freedom unto the people that are listening. It is when the preacher is free, the listeners will become free. It is when the pastor is free, the members will become free. It is when the pioneer, the patriarch, and the one that is leading the way, it is when he is free, the rest of us are going to be free. I don't want to to sit down and be preached to any man you know i don't want a judas has got to preach to me you know they say somebody is coming on is going to preach to us and i'm asking myself the man that is going to preach to me is he free is he free i'm free indeed does he have the liberty the deliverance the vibration that christ had given otherwise i don't want to waste my time sitting down there and having a judas as god preaching to me because we will never go beyond our preacher you never go beyond your pioneer you never go beyond the founder of your church and if the founder and the pioneer and the patriarch and the leader is not free i don't want to get into the bondage of any other man i want to be free i said i want to be free that's why i want to check up who is talking i want to check up who is talking to me it's not just where they have gone somebody's gone to seminary for three years i said judas had a greater seminary for more than three years from the greatest teacher the teacher that came from heaven and yet the man was not free i will be free tell me yo that is what you'll do so i'm telling you one man in this nation one man one woman in this nation if you are free and free indeed you will do something think about an eagle that is going to fly and then the eagle is tied down to a pole she it wants to fly the wings are all right the strength is all right 
the vision is all right but the leg is tied down that eagle will never get anywhere but break that chain destroy that string and release that eagle that eagle will get somewhere and if i can break your chain if i can destroy that yoke if i just look at you sometimes you don't know that you are bound you know why there is a pole everybody look here there's a pole here and the streak that ties you is very long to that side and because the string is very long and then you can move up and down you can go in a circle move up and down you don't know that you are bound and you don't know that you are not free but i can see it from here because i'm standing at a vantage point and because i stand at a vantage point i can see although you think you are free it's only the rope that ties you to the pole is very long no matter how long that rope is i came here to break that chain and then to put something inside you when you're free you'll fly when you're free you'll go places that's the reason i'm telling you that all these people we're talking about they were not free but i am going to be free i said i'm going to be free uh, you know these uh, wonderful people they you know god called moses and then he showed him the burning bush as he showed him the burning bush then he called him and said go tell pharaoh let my people go when god called that moses i need to tell you there was, you know you think that you know that moses at that time the lord called he was free can i tell you a little story what's that in your hand it's a rod throw it down it became a serpent pick it up it became a rod and then are you going to convince the people put your hand there it became leprous put your hand again it was clean are you sick that great man free man and then okay go now to pharaoh and go tell him let my people go as he was going on the way the lord met him to kill the son and Moses said, my wife, you see now, we should have circumcised the child. You did not allow that. See what has come between the time of the call and the time of the ministration. The man was not free. It was that moment that that circumcision was done and the man became free. I'm just telling you that if you think that, you know, miracle is there, throw the rod down, became a serpent and this one has happened, then you are free, you are now able to do everything. There is something that the Lord is pursuing and he says, I need to deal with this, I need to deal with that and when that total, complete, ultimate freedom, when it comes, then you know it has come and you will do it. You'll deliver the nation in Jesus' name. Now there was a man in the company of Moses, in the ministry of Moses. His name, Korah. Korah, Dathan, Nabiram. They were not free. They were not free. They were not free from rebellion. And you know what happened? The ground opened up and swallowed them and their talent and their gift and everything they had. What I'm just saying to you is that all I want to know is how free is this man? How free is this woman? Because it is a freedom that you have. That is what makes you to be able to do what you need to do. Another man is Lot. Lot and his wife. Are they free? Were they free? Of course not. You remember Miriam? Great, great woman great woman because that Miriam was the one that was standing there when little baby Moses was just by the seaside and then the daughter of Pharaoh looked at that and said this is one of the children the babies of these uh, Israelites and Miriam quickly came can I find you a nurse for him oh yes go and find and then brought the mother of Moses why it not for Miriam where would Israel have been? But Miriam began to say something. Miriam was not free from slander, from talk achievements. Miriam was not free from, you know, this kind of... And then the Lord came from heaven and said, Miriam, Aaron, what did I hear you saying? And leprosy came upon Miriam. I'm just telling you that as you look at all these people in the Bible, and then we go to the crusade field and we say, would you be free from the body of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you over evil the victory win? There is power in the blood. 
that the Lord will help you. I said the Lord will help you. That's whether you are in church or outside the church, anywhere you find yourself, what a great freedom. You know, Jesus Christ told his own disciples, he said, I'm going to be crucified, I will die, I'll be buried, and rise up when? The third day. And then he died. And then he was buried. And he rose again. And there was somebody who was not there. And then in his absence, Jesus came and said, Peace be unto you. And he breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And then this man came after and they said, We have seen him. Jesus my Lord. Jesus my Savior. He's risen from the dead. We saw him. And the man said, that's for you. If I don't see him myself and see the print of the nail in his hand, and then I dip my hand on his side, I will not believe. After three years of listening to Jesus, I will not believe. He was not free from unbelief. What's his name? Thomas. And the Lord is just telling us, when we, you know, when you are talking, be free, be free, be free. The question is, as we look at all these people in the Bible, are we free from all these things? It is only when we are free, the Lord will be able to release us to go and do what He wants us to do. A man that had had his good reign for a number of years, under the ministry of such great prophets like Isaiah, there was a time that something came to his heart. He was not free from pride. He went into the temple of the Lord and began to offer like the priests and the Levites offer. And they said, hey king, this is not your place. It appertained not unto kings to offer. And then he became angry. Leprosy came from on high and came upon him. And then they separated him. And he was in that separate house for many years until he died. I don't want to be like that at the end of my life to find that I'm not free from pride and then I go to do what I should not do and then I touch what I shouldn't touch his name Uzziah that's why the Lord is telling us that we need to be free and then I come to Zechariah Zechariah here is the angel came from heaven Zechariah your prayer is answered you're going to have a son and his name is going to be called John. And then after all, the angel said everything. He said, how can it be, man of God, asking such a question? A great priest of God asking such a question. How shall it be? And the angel said, I stand in the very presence of the Lord. And because you have not believed my word, and because you are not free from that unbelief, this is what will happen. That's the reason why I came to tell you here, just, just this single message, to tell you that if there is anything a minister, a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist, a prophet, a priest, if there's anything we need today, it is this freedom, ministerial success through pastoral freedom. Now that I've given you their names, I'm just going to tie it off for you now. Freedom has come. I said freedom has come. Yeah. Number one, freedom from the burden of sin. Freedom from the burden of sin. As you look at the word of God, you see that this is what Jesus did. He came to set people free. He came to set everyone free from the burden of sin. And as you begin to think about, don't just relax and say, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. Think about all those people I spoke about. And then you examine your life and examine every part of your ministry one by one into detail. And say, if Jesus came to grip freedom from the burden of sin, am I free? Let's look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 14. In John chapter 5, verse 14, after what Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more. Sin no more. Sin no more, lest a worse sin 
happen unto you. If there is any freedom we ought to declare, if there is any freedom we ought to possess, it is the freedom from sin. Jesus healed the man. And then he told the man, healing is not enough. Healing is wonderful. Healing is good. When you are sound and healthy, and you can stand without any pain, without any sickness, what a great privilege is that. But the Lord said, you'll be made whole. But one thing I need to tell you, sin no more, lest a worse sin happen unto you. That means then, freedom from the bondage of body of sin. Very important. John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 11. John chapter 8, verse 11. She said, No man, Lord, and Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Tell me the rest. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. That's the first thing the Lord wants to do in your life as a minister. Uh, now you understand because I give you all those names of great preachers and great ministers and great warriors that were not free. And the Lord is saying, I came to you, I came to your life so that I can set you free. And he said, you are forgiven. The past is gone. The past is buried. But from now on, go and sin no more. We're looking at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, and I'm reading there from verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. In First John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, He that committeth sin is what? Tell me out loud. He that committeth sin is of the devil. You know, many years ago, I had the unfortunate experience of listening to a preacher. You know, when you listen to a preacher, that should be a good experience to remember. When you listen to a preacher, that should be an exciting, interesting experience. But some years ago, I had the unfortunate experience of listening to a preacher. And then the preacher came and he said, well, I'm going to talk to you about salvation because Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. But even though I'm going to tell that he died for our sins, I'm a preacher myself. Then he said, he was not free from sin yet. And then he said, nobody can ever be free from sin. That either yours is lying, or yours is adultery, or yours is stealing, or yours is corruption, or yours is beating your wife. That you will have one or the other, that nobody can be free. I said, oh Lord, deliver me from a preacher like this. Everybody say, God, God, deliver me. God will deliver you from preachers that contradict Jesus. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus said, you have been made whole. But sin no more, lest a worse sin happen unto you. And the Bible says, he that committed sin is of the devil. The reason why Jesus came is to deliver us from every form of sin. And if you are still there, you are bound in secret. Freedom must come. Because Jesus said, if the Son shall set you free, he shall be free indeed. First John chapter 3 verse 8. In first John chapter 3 verse 8, it says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested. The Son of God was manifested that he might, tell me, destroy the works of the devil. Lying. Is that work of God or work of the devil? Messing up with your mate when your wife is not there. Is that of God or the devil? It's of the devil. Stealing church money. Instead of putting it in the bank and allowing them to spend it for the church. Stealing God's money in the church. Is that of God or the devil? Tell me. It's of the devil, you know that. And then Jesus was manifested that he might, that he might, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And then it says in verse 9, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, 
for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God he cannot sin he will not sin he must not sin because he is born he is born of God and if the members are going to be born again the minister must be born again if the children are going to be born again daddy and mommy should be born again but when daddy says my boy tell that man coming daddy is not at home and you are training your children to tell lies and the devil satan was a liar from the beginning and you are the one training the children you are at home but if you say you are not at home because the money is coming to claim you don't have that means then if the father is a sinner and is passing the sin on to the children what's the future of the children that's why the lord is telling us that father mother pastor minister everyone we need is freedom today and we've got that freedom in jesus name in first john chapter 5 verse 18 first john chapter 5 i read from verse 18 first john 5 18 it says we know that whosoever is born of God sinners not. A preacher will not defend sin. When you find a preacher defending sin, excusing sin, making allowance for sin in his preaching, there is sin in his life in the secret. And when he preaches against sin forcefully, as the Bible wants him to, he feels guilty and condemned. That's why he will use satanic wisdom, worldly wisdom, to defend, to protect, and to tolerate sin in the church. He says, we know. Thank God we know. I said, thank God we know. I know. I know. Then we know it together. He says, we know that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Then he says, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. He will not touch you. I said he will not touch you. Point number two, freedom from the bondage of Satan. Freedom from the bondage of Satan. Freedom from the bondage of Satan. If the devil could have anybody who will the devil want to have if the devil could hold anybody like this squeeze him and get every good thing out of him who will the devil want to have before you answer the question remember adam and eve the crown of god's creation and this satan went to eve and began a conversation and eventually adam and eve fell that's the great fall and remember if satan wants to have anybody who will he have he like to go to the best king in israel his name is david david was to take a decision and satan provoked him if satan is to have anybody who will he want to have he'll want to have a man like job satan where are you coming from? Well, I'm coming from the world. What have you seen there? Well, I've been going up and down. I've been going to and fro. Have you seen anybody there at all? Yes, there's one man there. What's his name? What's his name? Job. Have you seen that? That Job, he serves me. And he loves me. And is above a perfect man, a man that holds on to his integrity. And Satan said, Uh huh, I hear you. Why will he not serve you? You protect everything around him. And then, how happy he was when God said, Okay, go and touch everything he has. If Satan wants to have anybody, who will he want to have? Is the man at the top. Jesus Christ was fasting for how many how many days? 40 days and 40 nights. Not eating and not drinking water. He was about to start his ministry. The great work 
of redemption. And here comes Satan. Hey, you've been fasting. You have power. You have authority. Don't you want to eat? Look at all these tolls. After all, even Moses, your junior, he struck the rock and the rock brought out water. How about you? Even Joshua, your junior, looked up like this and said, Son, stop. What are you going to do? That you are higher than them. You are greater than them. Why don't you turn these stones to become bread? If Satan is going to have anybody, he'll want to get the best of them all. And here we are, we are ministers, we are people that have committed our lives and we say we're going to preach the gospel. And you think the devil is asleep? Simon, Simon. Satan has desired to have you, possess you as his own. Take you away from me and sift you like wheat so that you will not see what is coming on the day of Pentecost. If Satan is going to have anybody, who will he like to have? he will like to have the best of them all. That's why you need to pray the prayer that Lord, I need to be free. Free from the bondage of Satan. You know, sometimes we go out there and we are preachers and I understand I do it too. I preach too. I tell the people at the crusade field and I say, hey, all that bush spirit, all the mummy water spirit, all the, you know, the war spirit, the warfare, you know, all the things that came upon us during this uh, time of the civil war and the spirit came in the hearts of the people. We say, now if you are going to a prophet, come on here, we are going to pray for you and cast out that devil. That's great and good. But you know, we are ministers now and think about Simon, think about Judas and Scott, the Bible say, and Satan entered into him. That's the reason why we want to pray as ministers that number one is to be free from the bondage of sin, the body of sin. Number two is to be free from the bondage of Satan. And once you are free on this side and you are free on this side, ministry will begin. And we're going to do great marvelous things for the Lord in Jesus' name. I want you to look at um, First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Remember David? That's the one that killed Goliath. And Satan provoked David. Remember David? That's the one that played with the harp, with the sons, and the evil spirit departed from Saul. That's the David. And Satan provoked David. Have you ever known a preacher? You know, in preaching, sometimes we have, you know, many members, wonderful members, colorful members, different kinds of members. The only problem is some of the members sometimes will like to provoke you. They like to stir you up. They like to engineer something within you. They like to put an engine inside you that will propel something out of your mouth that shouldn't come out of your mouth. And it is not James, it is not John, it is not Michael, it is not Simeon, it is not that person you are looking at. It is Satan that is standing behind them to provoke you. And then your decision making in your plans, in everything you want to do. They have a way of instigating, exciting, provoking. And Satan provoked David. And I pray that you'll be free from that provocation in Jesus' name. Because you know, that can destroy the whole of your ministry. In fact, as you read the story of what followed after this provocation of David, thousands and thousands of thousands of people in Israel died because of yielding to that provocation. And I pray the Lord who has chosen you, the Lord who has appointed you, will not allow you to fall into that provocation of the enemy in Jesus' name. Are you still there? I wanted an amen there. We're looking at the word of God. Look at Zechariah. Zechariah. And I'm reading it from verse... I'm reading it from verse um, 3. Zechariah. Chapter 3. From verse 3. 
Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of garments. Look at the favor of this person, God. But if you go back to verse 1, Satan want to prevent, wanted to prevent all that. The reason why Satan comes and he wants to hold the minister in bondage is so that the things that will follow, the great ministry that will follow, so that it will not come. Look at verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And uh, tell me the rest. Tell me, you listen, won't you go? And Satan standing at his right hand to help him, to encourage him, to lift him up, to do what? To resist him, to hinder him. That's the reason why, as you make plans, God has given me vision. He wants me to do this and do this. We need freedom. Freedom from number one, the burden of sin. Freedom number two, from the bondage of Satan. We're looking at Luke chapter 22. In Luke chapter 22, Peter did not know this, but Jesus knew. And I pray that what Jesus knows about you, you will know it too. I said you will know it too. We're looking at Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, possess you, take hold of you, that he may sit you as witch. That's what he wants to do. He wants to possess. He wants to take hold. He wants to manipulate and manage this great man of God. But well, thank God Jesus prayed for him. And I believe Jesus is praying for you. And the prayer of Jesus for you will not fail in Jesus' name. Number one, freedom from what? Tell me. The burden of sin. Number two, freedom from the bondage of Satan. Number three now, freedom from the bitterness in your spirit. Freedom from the bitterness in your spirit. Other countries will not understand this one. You know what? Just a few years ago, it's not up to 20 years yet, there was this internal, tribal, national warfare. And you know the story. Maybe your brother was affected. Maybe your sister was affected. Maybe daddy or mommy was affected. Maybe your clan, the people around you were affected. And see how they brutalized lives. And see how they deformed people. And you know the person that did this to this person. And since that time, thank God the peacekeepers came and thank God Britain they sent their troops and thank God eventually we were liberated and everything is now all right it's all right on the street it's all right with the new roads that have been connected it's all right with the agricultural products that have been taken from this place and taken to that place it is all right now from here to guinea and from here to liberia the roads are there and the trade everything is going on that is there outwardly but inside here, I see that person. And I know he was a person that mutilated that my relative. And every time you see him, there is something that brings the history back to mind. And then as he's preparing and cooking something inside you, there is something that is called bitterness. And even in the church, here we are, you are a pastor. And then this one comes from water baptism. That one comes from water baptism. And then you see this fellow. And look at his face. 
What's your name? Just show the name. Do you know Mr. So and So? That's my senior brother. I'm not joking. Yes, my senior brother. The same father, the same mother. Eh? What have you come for? I want a member of your church to baptize me in water. Please stay here. I'll come to you later. I, I need to tell. I want to ask you some questions. There's a story that I learned, and we're going to talk about it. And then you remember. He said that man is a senior brother. That was the man that did this and did this and buried that my relative and we discovered it and this fellow now wants water baptism from me he now wants forgiveness he wants to be part of the kingdom of god there is something inside him and as long as that bitterness is there and then we say i'm a preacher i'm an evangelist i'm a, I'm a pastor i am an evangelist i want everybody to come to the lord don't you know there are some parts of the country you never go to preach the gospel why you want to go and preach the gospel there the spirit of jonah is inside here that if you go to preach to nineveh these people that have done great evil against the land of israel if they repent and they don't perish how will they pay for their sin me i will not go to nineveh and then he goes the other way you know the story and then the whale caught him and then eventually he prayed and then vomited him to the side of Nineveh and the voice said Jonah here am I Lord get up again that Nineveh go there and declare to them the word I gave you alright I will because if I don't there is trouble and then he went in Nineveh yet tell me you don't know your Bible? Tell me the preaching of Jonah. Yet, 40 days and uh, Nineveh shall be overthrown. And he said that and then he went. A preacher, he had bitterness against the people of Nineveh. He was sitting down 40 days. I will see what will happen. Then the king of Nineveh repented. All the cabinet repented. All the people repented. And then 40 days came. And what is what I announced? Nineveh shall be overthrown. They were not overthrown. He was angry. Bitterness in the heart. And then the Lord made the plant to come, shielded him. He was happy. A worm came, destroyed that plant. And then God said, Jonah, preacher, evangelist, what are you doing here? The spirit of bitterness inside the heart will not allow him to take joy in the salvation in the forgiveness of the people of Nineveh and then eventually he said but you said you are going to destroy them but they repented since they repented why will I destroy that's what I said when I was in my country I don't want to go to a place like that because I know you you are forgiving a merciful God a compassionate God you will forgive them now you made me like a false prophet. I told them they were going to be destroyed. Now they are not destroyed. What will they think about me? Why don't you send them to hell so that I can be a true prophet? And then God said, Jonah, are you doing well for this bitterness in your heart? Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 21 through to verse 23. Acts chapter 8. Reading from verse 21. Acts chapter 8 verse 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thine heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and, and pray God. If perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the goal of bitterness. I perceive, I can see it in your spirit that you are in the goal of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. That's why the Lord is telling us the old hatred, old hatred. It was there for maybe 20 years now, 30 years now. Old hatred 
that every time you see that image, you can smile on the outside. Every time you see him, you can you look to be genial and gentle and honorable and at ease, but internally. The bitterness is there because of the old hatred. Ezekiel chapter 25. Ezekiel 25. I'm reading from verse 15. Ezekiel 25 verse 15. Old hatred normally brings bitterness. Ezekiel 25 verse 15. Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines are dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred to destroy the other person because there's an old hatred that's why you want to pray lord i want this ultimate freedom i want this complete freedom number one from the body of sin number two from the bondage of satan and then number three from the bitterness in your spirit then we'll be able to say praise the lord i am free free from the body of sin free from the bondage of satan and free from every form of bitterness in my spirit let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer freedom freedom for the pastors Ministerial success comes through freedom. Pastoral freedom. Parental freedom. Time to pray. Time to pray. You want to talk to the Lord that He will set you free. Freedom. Freedom. Listening to the message is not enough. We need his power to set us free. Preaching it is not enough. We need his power to set us free. Freedom from the bondage of sin, the sin of adultery, the sin of fornication, the sin of drunkenness, and the sin of using hard drugs in the secret, the sin of stealing church money. Freedom. And Jesus has that power. He'll set you free. He did it for others. He'll do it for you. When He sets us free, He releases us into real ministry. Guilt is gone. Condemnation is gone. And now you're free. Free indeed. Let him do it. And wash in the precious blood of Jesus, the wonder walking power of the blood of the Lamb. Will walk in you. And he'll set you free. But in our sin, let him take it away. Let him break the power of cancelled sin. He came to save, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Pastoral freedom leads to ministerial success. Free within and free without. Free in the morning and free in the day and free in the night. Free on Sunday and free during the week. 
free when your wife is there free when your wife is not there free when other people are watching you and free when nobody is watching you free through and through free your soul and free your spirit no bitterness no bondage no burden let him set you free ye shall know the truth and the truth will make you free ye shall know the truth and the truth will make you free this is the truth Jesus is the great Redeemer, Savior and Lord, the King of glory. He will set you free. He will set you free. He will set you free. Free from the burden of sin. Free. From the bondage of Satan and free from bitterness in your spirit.